Hello, the average cyclist here, and welcome to my review of my 4i Precision Power Meter. Um, this is the Ultegra version. It's left side only, and it's in a length of uh, 170 mil. Um, I'm quite short, so my bike got quite a small frame, and 170 mil is what came with my bike. Um, I've been saying for years and years that I should get a power meter and I said that when they drop to a somewhat reasonable price, which they're just sort of starting to do, um, that, that, that I would grab one. Uh, so this year when bonus, uh, bonus time came around, uh, I thought I'd treat myself. This old Tegra one retails for £469, which I know is still quite a lot of money, but it's much, much, much cheaper than they have been um, for the last few years. Uh, they've lot more uh, there's a lot more competition in the market and prices seem to be dropping almost monthly uh, I seem to see uh, a deal on somewhere uh, if you if you are running the 105 uh, group set um, then you can pick the, the power meter up for only 379 quid which is very very cheap um, relatively um, I've had it for two months and I've done about 1,200 kilometers uh, using it now, both on the, the road and also on Zwift. Um, I won't go into why you might want to power meter too much because uh, there's lots of resources elsewhere um, and uh, it's primarily a review video. Um, but there are three main reasons that most people uh, are after one. As a tool to structure training, uh, and to maximise what you're getting out of your sessions. Not for me, I don't really like to train, I'd rather just ride. Um, as a pacing tool, um, so for example, help you, you pace yourself up longer climbs uh, and me measure your effort. Um, and then also, just because data's cool really, uh, and it's another metric to look at at Strava. Maybe not everyone's quite as quite sad as me, but I'm sure there's a few people out there like that. Um, it's just, just nice to be able to see uh, what, what what wattage you're putting out and how you're improving over time. Uh, you know, it's just nice. Um, so how did I end up picking this one? Um, ideally, I'd have loved um, a um, dual side power meter. And this, as I said, uh, this is just left side only. It's the world's lightest left side only uh, power meter. In fact, at nine, nine grams. Um, but I didn't want to spend more than 500 quid. That was uh, that was the the top of my budget. It's still still a hell of a lot of money to spend on 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 something like this, which is relatively frivolous to be honest. Um, there are a few other viable options which I'll I'll, I'll link to um, uh, that fall into that category um, of being under under 500 pounds. Um, uh, so they are the the, the Watt Team Power Beat. I definitely didn't want this because of the, the dubious attachment method. It's got some weird gubbings sort of hanging off the, the crank and the, the pedal spindles. I'd, I would just definitely end up breaking one off, uh, putting the bike in and out of the car, which I do at least twice a week. There's then the power pod. Um, didn't like the look of this hanging off the front of the, the, the bars. And also oh, there's dubious review, uh, lots of reviews about dubious data readings and it can, can be a bit dodgy. So that pretty much left the 4i uh, and also Stages, um, which have been the market leader for left-only power meters for a few years, been used by Team Sky. Um, there isn't really much in it, to be honest, between Stages um, and the 4i when it comes to functionality, the sh form factor, shape and size, its weight, um, all the power readings and accuracy. This is just a touch lighter. Um, stages is about 50 quid over the, I think it's about 550 quid for an Altegra one. So. Um, that was the, uh, the the main reason there. I'll just quickly show you what you, what you get in the box. Um, so this is the the box here. Um, it's got some product features on here. As you can see, allegedly 99% accurate, um, durable and waterproof, easy calibration. Um, you can update firmware via via the the, the app. Um, it's compatible with AMP Plus and Bluetooth, which uh, is always nice. Um, uh, inside the box, what you'll get is something that looks a, a bit like this. This is actually my old crank arm because the power meter's on my bike. Um, but I've just popped this in here to show you. Some very, very simple instructions, which are, to be honest, all you need to get going um, if you're not an idiot. Um, and then... Oh, I can't remember what this was. 
another little information manual which I obviously didn't read last time um, and then bent over this piece of cardboard sort of like stretch stretch shield you get your crank arm uh, this one is my my old one it's not got the power meter on it I'll show you the other one on my bike in a minute but that's what you get in the box um, not much uh, you just don't need it um, but very easy to, to use um, as I'll uh, demonstrate now so before you buy um, the 4R you just need to make sure that it fits on your frame to be honest it is incredibly small I can't imagine that it wouldn't fit on on, on, on many frames to be honest um, it's very easy to do all you need to do is get a AAA uh, AAA battery like this and then about 10 centimeters up your crank arm from uh, from the the, uh, the the bottom bracket up here just make sure that it fits the it, uh, the AAA battery fits between your chain stay and the crank arm itself as you can see this is about the same size as the the power meter itself so the power meter the whole thing is just this this black piece here uh, as you can see with mine there's loads of loads of room I can wiggle the AAA battery in there and to, and I'm sure on most bikes it is the case but it's definitely worth checking uh, it's a it's an easy an easy check, test to do and I'm sure everyone's got a, got a AAA battery lying about so the installation is uh, super super simple if you've ever changed the crank arm at all um, you, you'll be able to do it you don't need any special tools really um, uh, you just need an allen key uh, and one of the one other tool you don't need but it w would would make it a little, does make the um, installation a little bit a little bit easier um, first of all you need to put the battery in um, I'll just show you um, uh, how, how you you do that what with the, the, the crank still on the the bike I don't want to take it off just for that but um here's the the battery cap as you can can see it's a bit 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 mucky there all you do is press the battery into um, the cap with the rounded edge facing down as you can see like I've done there and then you put the the mount on there and you twist it and that's it that's your your battery in um, can't can't go can't go wrong um, so insulation steps are first of all take your old uh, crank crank arm off now this is a little tool I alluded to earlier it's um, I'm not quite sure what it's called it's a Shimano this is Shimano specific crank installation tool uh, I'll find one and put a link in the description uh, it's a little plastic plastic thing here and uh, you just push that in here and then hold your hold your crank arm still and then it allows you to just take that little cap off uh, I'm not going to do it on do it now it's just a plastic cap if not you can just get a big screwdriver um, or some other tool and just twist it it's um, some sometimes you can do it by hand I might do it by sticking your finger in that one. I think I did that up quite tight. Um, undo the Allen bolt here and the Allen bolt on the other side. Um, and then carefully give the crank a wiggle um, in this direction to take the, the crank arm off. It will come off. It might be a little bit little bit stuck, um, but, but you'll get there in the end. Uh, then get the, the new crank with the power meter attached. Put it back on. You can't get it on the wrong way. It only goes in one direction. Put this cap back on first to push. Um, that will push the um, crank arm back into uh, against the bottom bracket to make it to make sure it's in all the way. And then tighten the Allen bolts um, uh, to the required torque. Obviously, you should always use a torque wrench um, uh, so that, and make sure they're tightened to the to the required torque. Uh, and for this one, it says 12 to 14 newton meters of force. That's quite a lot. Um, that's quite a lot of um, torque. That's quite. You'd have to twist that quite hard. Um, I didn't use a torque uh, a torque wrench on this. I've got one, but I don't really use it too much unless I'm doing up something with a carbon part underneath it. Um, you'll be fine. That is very tight. You just obviously don't, you don't want that falling off as you, when you when you're cycling. Um, and that's it. Once you've done that, um, that's the that's the installation done. Setting up um, the uh, the 4i for its initial use is incredibly easy. 
Uh, it's just a case of obviously making sure you've already put the battery in, spinning the crank arms a few times. You do have to do it quite a few um, uh, to, to wake the device up and then searching for it using your Garmin, your Wahoo, your Turbo Trainer or whatever you, whatever you want to connect it to. Um, connects to anything with Ant Plus or Bluetooth. Um, so, uh, and you pair with that just in the normal way. I'm not gonna, gonna go with that because it'll be different from device to device, but um, however you'd pair any, uh, uh, any other um, cadence sensor, speed sensor, your heart rate monitor, it just connects to, to that uh, in that way. You do need to make sure the device that you're connecting, to, connecting it to is power meter enabled. Some of the older Garmin's and uh, G GPS devices, they won't, uh, won't accept um, power, power meters. Similarly, some GPS watches and things like that don't have that functionality either, even the, even the newer ones. Um, so check that before, um, before you buy, because you, uh, you might find out that you actually need a, a new head unit as well. Once you receive your um, 4i, the first thing you want to do is update the firmware. Um, it could be that uh, your device was actually manufactured maybe even six, nine months before you receive it. So the firmware on the device um, could, could be out of date as uh, manufacturers semi-regularly um, with this sort of thing um, re release uh, software updates um, which can improve accuracy, reliability and sometimes provide new features. Uh, it's very easy to do. You'll just need to download the 4i app from wherever you get apps from for your phone. If it's Android, um, the, the Play Store, if it's um, an Apple device from the App Store. Um, you do need to connect the, your phone to uh, the Bluetooth on the, the power meter. Um, just in the, the same way you connect to any Bluetooth device. I won't go into that because it will be different between operating systems. Once you have done that, um, you can see uh, it's found the nearby power meter, so this is my one here, um, and then you uh, would like to select that you want it single sided because this power meter only has single sided. Um, here you can see it's found a few bits of information from the device, you can see that uh, my battery still got 72%, it's quite, quite an old um, battery now, so you know in six weeks it's only lost 28% of its, its charge, which is which is pretty good. Um, and if you go into settings, you can see the scale factor there. So um, that's that scale factor is um, adjusting for left and right leg imbalance. Um, so um, I'm about 48.52. Um, so that will scale the readings from my left leg, which is only 48, by 4% to to take it up to 50-50 uh, uh, on each leg. Um, there are instructions on how to do that online if, if, if you can't do the calculation. Um, so also on here you can see I've got firmware version 2.1.0. Calibrating the power meter is really, really easy. Um, all you need to do, uh, and I do this before every ride, um, you just need to set the crank arm at 6 and 12 like this. Um, and then on the on the app, um, or your head unit um, with, with, Gar with the Garmin, that will vary between devices. But on the app, it's, it's just, once you're connected, you're just going to click calibrate here. If you just give it a second, you can see zero offset calibration successful, and that's it calibrated. Um, it's good to do that, particularly if you've moved between uh, a warm house or being cold outside. Just do it just before you start your ride um, to make sure that your readings are, are consistent. Um, so that's that's good. So I'll just quickly run through some of the pros and cons of, of the power meter um, that that I've discovered in the last. Uh, six weeks of use or so. Um, the first um, is, and I think it was actually a bit of a co complaint about the the first couple of stages power 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 meters as well. Is to do with the battery cap. Um, feels pretty flimsy, and as you can see, it's it's very very tiny, uh, and there is a tiny little rubber rubber seal around uh, like a rubber gasket around the outside of this cap to keep the water out. But it just feels a bit flimsy and shit, and I think. 
you know, the, the whole device weighs nine grams, and I think a couple of grams of extra weight in the cap to make it feel a little bit better and feel a little bit more secure wouldn't have gone amiss. Um, uh, wouldn't have gone amiss there. Um, second point is that sometimes you do have to, when trying to wake the um, power meter up, you've got to spin this quite a few times. It doesn't necessarily connect um, straight away. So um, a, a, a few times uh, I've, I've spanned it what I thought was four or five times to wake the device up. My Garmin hasn't found it. Um, and then I've had to spin it again and again and again and eventually it does wake up um, and connect. Not a major issue, um, but it can be a, a bit annoying when you're just trying to get out the door uh, on your bike. Um, third point was uh, uh, is about the app. Uh, it did crash quite a few times when I initially got it uh, and I was trying to set up, um, set up the device and download the latest firmware. That said, it hasn't been a problem at all since then. I've used the app a few times to calibrate. It's found the power meter and, um, and calibrated straight away. Um, it's just, uh, I found that, that when you spend quite a lot of money on a device and you're just trying to get it up and running straight out of the box, it's, it's, it's just very annoying uh, when you get hit a hurdle like that with a shitty app, which could have easily been, uh, it's just, just, just poor, poor coding. Um, so maybe they've done an update. Um, I haven't, haven't looked to see if they've done an update for that, but it's been, it's been flawless since. Um, so we come to the pros. Um, the, the main one is that the consistency of the readings, the power readings I've been getting out of this have been perfect. It's day after day. I'm, I'm seeing what I feel is reliable and repeatable um, readings, uh, at least it's consistent. That's, that's, that's the main thing about power, me uh, power meters. Um, there's absolutely no maintenance to it um, to, to get those, those readings other than um, uh, calibrating the device from time to time. You don't have to do it every ride. I have been doing it every ride uh, and I've had no, I've absolutely no, no problems. Um, uh, one of the other pros is the, the feature to be able to um, compensate if you have an imbalance between your left and right legs. So for me, my left leg is uh, about 48% of my strength, and my right 52, and you can program that into the device to, to compensate for that so you get a, a realistic uh, or, or a true reading to, to what you're actually, uh, what the power you're actually putting out. Um, it's incredibly light and small. You're never ever gonna know it's there. Um, the, the nine grams is, is not worth talking about. And you've got no weird things hanging off your crank arms or, or your pedals like you do with the um, with the Garmin Garmin vectors uh, uh, and also uh, with the Watt Team Powerbeat, which is even more peculiar a peculiar setup. Uh, so you know you're not going to knock it off or anything like that. You'd you'd have to be incredibly awkward to to do that. So so that's great and. Uh, to add to that, it's great value. Uh, it's not cheap, but it is great value, it's, especially when you compare it to some of the others, others on the market. They all do a, a similar job, and there's a, you know, there's a quite quite a variety of different options out there. Um, I did a lot of research before I bought this, and decided this was the best for me. Make sure you, you have a good look around. Um, Overall, I'd highly recommend it, um, especially if you've if you've got the 105, uh, if you're running one, a 105 group set, because it's even more more affordable, uh, if you can call a power meter affordable. Um, but uh, it's almost a it's almost a no, no brainer if you're if you're running 105, uh, your decision's almost made. I'll pop a link in the script description to uh, this power meter and also the the little crank removal tool because that's just a nice little thing to have especially if you might be doing this a bit more regularly than the just a one-off so if you want to move the power meter between bikes for example um, if you want to see more reviews uh, hints tips and other bits and bobs that um, I, I like to up upload um, or if you've got any questions just comment below and I'll get back to you please subscribe um, let me know what you want to see um, and I'll um, get to it making making more videos um, thank you very much uh, if you want to see more reviews hints tips um, or anything else that uh, I like to upload please subscribe um, if you've got any questions please comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible and thanks for listening problems um, but like I said it hasn't been a, a problem for me but it does feel a little bit shit and I think another two grams of